Well, it's a blessing to be here tonight and uh, see all you folks again. And uh, we're just so thankful to be able to be here and uh, be a part of this missions conference. We're just we're humbled by that, and uh, we just we're so thankful for each and one of you and your kindness towards us. And and uh, brother, you got about 20 minutes if you get in that water. They say you got about 20 minutes, and you're and that's that's about all. If they don't get you out in 20 minutes, they say you're dead. But um, but uh, <laughs> yes, sir. And uh, amen. Well, what a blessing beer tonight. Well, I tell you, I'm glad Brother uh, Joel's going to follow me up because he can wake you up after I'm done with you. <laughs> and uh, but I'll tell you what, if you've come to hear me preach tonight, you'll probably be disappointed. But I hope you came to hear the word of the Lord tonight. Yes, sir. And um, I'm excited about the message the Lord gave me. And the Lord already preached it to me this afternoon. And I'm, I'm excited about it. Uh, go ahead and take your Bibles to Acts chapter 4. We go ahead and get in. Get there and get ready. Um, you know, missions, uh, missions as well has been always one of my favorite. Uh, you know, we, we have missions conferences year once a year usually. Uh, growing up, we had had that at our church, and that was always my favorite time of the year. And I can remember as a little boy, um, probably you know nine, ten years old, uh, missions conference coming around. I was always excited. You know, I didn't understand faith promise missions at that age much, but I, I had. I remember one time we had we had the missions conference and I was I was committed I was going to give one dollar every every night that week, and um, and that's where my missions began, my missions giving began, and then uh, not too long after that I started doing that commitment that monthly commitment. I'm I'm so thankful that I had a church that um, that I could be a part of early on that taught missions and was a uh, emphasis on missions, and uh, missions you know missions begins in the throne room of God. Um, you know, missions is the heartbeat of God, and we, you know, and when a church is about missions, it's it's about the heartbeat of God, and um, but you know, we have we have missions conference this week. You know, it's not missions doesn't begin here this week. It's it it begins with John three sixteen for God so loved the world. Um, you know, before you know, somebody once told me this: if you go to the mission field, don't be surprised that you will find God already there. Uh, you know, we don't we don't take God with us to the mission field, but he does use us. And uh, God always is there before us. He's always there. Uh, he he is the one just like Cornelius. Um, boy, he was he had already dealt with Cornelius. He heard Cornelius's cry and he had a man named Peter to go. And uh, and that is missions. But we cannot do missions apart from the power of God. Uh, we cannot do it in our own power. I tell you, it's. You know, especially myself, I look at myself, my in, incapabilities, and uh, we cannot do missions outside of the power of God. And there's there's so much around in the world today about missions that we hear and see that is 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 all about man's uh, devices, and uh, uh, we 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 cannot operate under that premise. But Acts chapter four, um, let's see, I think we're going to go and read. Let's go ahead and stand, if, if you would. We'll, we'll, this is the, uh, if you step back to chapter 3, I'll just give you a little bit of background. We could read a lot, but I, I don't want to do too much of that at this moment. But if you go, jump back to chapter 3, just to get a little bit of context. This is Peter and John uh, going up to the temple. Let's read verse uh, 1 of chapter 3. Now Peter and John went up to the, uh, together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked in alms, and Peter, fasting his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Amen. Have you ever had somebody that was expecting to get something from you? Yeah. And uh, I love Peter's response. And uh, he uh he says here in verse 5, And he gave uh, heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. In verse 6, Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. You know, Amen. we have something so much greater than money to give. Yeah. We have so much more. Uh, we have such a greater answer for the world than temporal riches. Uh, but jump now over to uh, chapter 4, if you would. So we know Peter here, he... He lays hands on the man, and he he goes uh, he he raises the man that had been lame, and uh, and goes on his way. 
And we know that the Pharisees here and the, the religious leaders are upset that he healed this man. And uh, th there's a stir. And you get over to chapter 4, and, uh, and they had actually uh, taken Peter and John in. They talked to them. And, but here in verse 11 of chapter 4, it says, um, actually, let's jump right into verse 12. Neither is there salvation any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Verse 13, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Father, the power in it, the, the, the uh, ability to, to have your written word for us today. Father, we yeah. thank you for that. Father, we pray for the, the service tonight. Lord, I pray that it would be only of you, Lord, through your Holy Spirit speaking through me, through Brother Joel tonight, Lord. And Father, may we be known as people that have been with Jesus. Father, please. And Father, please bless now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. I want to talk about tonight. Have you been with Jesus? Have you been with Jesus? Uh, the the religious rulers here, they had uh, they had been giving him a hard time for this 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 incident of of healing this lame man, and they here in chapter chapter four verse thirteen they took heed. It says. Uh, they had perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. Uh, you know, I'm so thankful that God uses <laughs> unlearned and ignorant men because I'm I'm in the front of the line, brother. Amen. <laughs> and uh, yep. you know, who who was Peter and John? Who was the disciples? It was those fishermen. Amen. Those those lowly men that nobody else would have had time for. Uh, but Jesus took those men and he he took them and he he trained them up. Mm -hmm. And boy, I tell you, it's so encouraging to me because. Boy, I, I am so lowly in that area. I, I have no abilities to bring to God, but he is, he is able to use those uh, lowly men. And uh, it says, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Amen. The only, the, the only thing that they could say was those men were with Jesus. Yeah. And those men have been with Jesus. And that's what we need in our world today is, uh, you know, the world needs to encounter some men and women who have been with Jesus. Um, they don't. They don't need our 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 new mission, uh, you know, strategy, our new mission uh, <laughs> plan, if you will. Uh, we can plan all all day long, but if you try to do it without the power of the Holy Ghost, you'll fail. Um, the world needs to encounter some men and women who have been with Jesus. You know, our effectiveness is not found in our in our really ability. It's our relationship with the Lord. Um, these men had been with Jesus. They'd, they'd been with him. Um, they had a relationship with him. I'm so thankful it's not found in our own wisdom, our own strength. You know, we, we, <laughs> we could lean on the arm of flesh too much. Um, yeah. Boy, you know, you get, you get to thinking, well, I, I think we should do it this way. Well, make sure you're leaving the Holy Spirit uh, as leader in your life. And, uh, but number one tonight... As we go through this, why were they known as men that were uh, that had been with Jesus? I believe number one tonight they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. They were filled. They were men who were filled with the Holy Spirit. And boy, tonight I want to be known as that man that's filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Uh, but look, look in verse eight, chapter four it says, "Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we." This day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man by what means he is made whole. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand before you whole. Amen. He, Peter, Peter stood up and he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, that is why Peter and the disciples were known as men that had been with Jesus. They were filled. You know what? You know what happened back in Acts chapter 1. Turn back there if you would. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Um, you remember when Jesus was taken up. Uh, what did he tell the disciples? Um, Wait in Jerusalem until you are given power from the Holy Ghost. Let's read verse 8. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem 
and in all Judea, in Samaria, and on the uttermost part of the earth. Amen. They, number one, they waited for the Holy Spirit at Jerusalem. You know, how many times do we leave Jerusalem without the power? You know, we, we, leave, we leave to go to the mission field without the power of God in our lives. And I've, I've begged the Lord not to allow that in my life. I want God's power in what I'm doing, because it, otherwise it's all in vain. Don't leave Jerusalem without the power. Um, look and look. Turn back to chapter three. You know they also um, were in being filled with the Holy Spirit. They were filled with God's power and holiness. Look here in verse three, uh, chapter three, verse twelve. Acts chapter three, verse twelve. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, "Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this?" Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power and holy or holiness we had made this man to walk? You know, the people had come. They rushed in to see what was going on. But there was a commotion. The man that was healed obviously was making some commotion. Uh, the Bible says that he, he, he took up and, and started leaping and praising God. And, uh, you know, we sing, our kids sing that song. And uh, they get excited when they sing that song about the, the man that uh, got up and started running. And no doubt the people were coming in. They were excited to see what's happening. And they all came to Peter and were, were looking on him. And Peter says, why are you looking at me thinking that it's my power? Why, why are you looking at me like it's my holiness that has made this man whole? Um, it is not through our power or holiness that we can do the work of the Lord. Uh, it is through the power of God, through the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit is power. Um, is is God's power revealed to man? You think of all the way back into um, Genesis one verse two, when the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Yeah. Um, well, you, every time you see the Holy Spirit uh, at the day of Pentecost, it was it was movement. Amen. It was power. God's power. We need God's power in our ministry in our in our lives, and we need His holiness. Amen. We. We have to be a, a, a people of holy. Be holy because I am holy, saith the Lord. We got, you know, sometimes we just get too full of the world instead of full of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, I'm guilty of that myself. I have, to, I have to remind myself, it is not of myself, it is of God. Also, number two, I believe they were committed to prayer. Why were they men known... Uh, to be with Jesus, because they were men committed to prayer. They were men committed to prayer. Look in verse 24, if you would. Um, I believe that's in chapter 3, if I wrote that down right. Or chapter 4, verse 24. Now this is when, now that the, uh, uh, Peter, and, Peter and John already had uh, been told not to speak by the, the, uh, the men there, verse 24, he comes back and says, And when they had heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. And now this is the church. I should have backed up to verse 23 uh, because it says here, uh, And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. You know, Peter and John went back and told the church, told the elders what had happened. And, uh, you know, it's almost like, uh, going back and telling your hunting story, man. <laughs> hey, guess what happened to me out there today? And, uh, you know, they, they went back and told them. And what did they do in verse 24? They, they lifted up their voice. The church lifted up their voice in, in prayer. But also look in verse 31. In verse 31. And when they had prayed, now again, this is, this is the, the whole assembly here. When they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Uh, where was Peter and John going that day? It says they were going up to the temple to pray at the, the hour of prayer. Um, the early church, were the men of the early church, the women, they were committed to prayer. Amen. I think they were a praying people. They were, they were a praying people. You remember the time when, when Peter was in prison, uh, not too far after this? Uh, he was in prison. The church was gathered together and praying for Peter. Amen. Yeah. Uh, that's another thing. We need to be gathered. We have to be gathered. Amen. Amen. We have to be gathered. There's power in the church gathering uh, in prayer and in, in, in supplication to the Lord. 
And as, as we've traveled, we've noticed that with churches that, that, that take the time to pray together, they're a strong church, they're a committed church, and, and they're, they are very uh, on fire for the Lord. They take the time to pray together. If you look through the scriptures, I believe you will see prayer before any great movement of the church. Um, you know, you see right here in verse 31, after they prayed, the place was shaken. Um, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Man, they were on fire for the Lord. Uh, they, had, they, had, they had a prayer meeting that night. And prayer is how we advance forward, amen, in our, in our personal life and as a church. Um, there should always be prayer uh, before any advancement that we attempt. Um, thirdly, why were they men known that they had been with Jesus? I believe because they were all together of one mind. Uh, they were of one mind. Look here in verse 32, chapter 4, and it says, And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. You know, even you go back to the earlier chapters, you see that the church, the believers that came together, they had all in common. It says they, they were all of one accord. They were of one accord. They were all going in the same direction, and they were all committed to the cause of Christ. They were all committed in, in missions, in the reaching of the lost. And if we are going to move forward, uh, if you're going to move forward as a church, well, you've got to be together, and you've got to be uh, knit together. Your hearts have to be knit together in prayer, uh, but in the, in, the, in the filling of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and, that, and that is where the Holy Ghost comes in. It, it, you know, we, we are all of one spirit. Amen. The, the Bible says that we've been baptized into the spirit of God. And um, and and there there should be unity, amen. There should be unity in the church. Again, in verse twenty four, they all lifted up their voice in one accord. It says um, they had one common prayer, one common goal, to reach the world for Christ. You know, if we are going to be effective in missions, we're going to have to unite in prayer. And then we're going to have to unite. That's what missions conference is about. Is is about you know we can't one church can't reach the world by a faith promise, but a whole bunch of churches, a whole bunch of people doing yeah. the same thing. Um, boy, there's there's power in that, and there's an advancement. Um, you know, the world around us, the world is is holding hands, racing towards hell. I mean, they are they are leaping towards hell. So much more should the church be joining hands racing towards uh, the reaching the lost. Um, you know, you look around us, the world is just, they're, they're, they're racing towards eternal hell. We must do something about it. Tonight, I want to ask you this as I finish. Are you known to be somebody that's been with Jesus? Um, well, I had to ask myself this afternoon, um, have I been with Jesus enough? Have I, have I spent enough time in prayer? Have I spent enough time in the word of God, amen. You remember Moses, when he went up into the mount, he came down, and boy, you knew he was with, he, you knew he'd been with God. His yeah. face, his face glowed. Um, boy, that's what we need to be before we walk out into the world, uh, before we walk into our, our workplace. Um, are you known at your work for somebody that's been with Jesus? Um, the world is waiting for somebody to step into their life who knows something of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, Thank you for your word, Father. I pray this will be a help tonight, Lord. Please bless Brother Joel as he preaches. Father, give us the, the burden for lost souls, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Mike. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Uh, missions, missions, missions. You know, uh, Brother Mike doesn't know what our theme is, you know. But people, you know, our theme is that I may know him. And it talks about a relationship, a close relationship. Um, uh, you'll remember uh, the opening message of that. There are some that their experience with Jesus was a one-time uh, introduction. There are some where Jesus is just an acquaintance. And then there are some that... They really know Jesus. And that's where we all need to be. And that's where we, that's where I want to be. 
And these men that he, he talked about, you know, people saw and they recognized. Hey, they may be ignorant, but we perceive they've been with Jesus. Amen. Amen. And they ought to say that about us. Amen. And if we'll get that, people will recognize it. And they say, well, there's somebody been with Jesus. I love that thought. Amen. All right.